the greatest fear that I have regarding um, the outcome uh, for America of these disclosures is that nothing will change. As Snowden finally leaves a Moscow airport today, his greatest fear that nothing will change hasn't materialized. But instead, a flurry of legislation has dropped here on Capitol Hill to rein in the NSA and bring more transparency to the top secret FISA court. And last week's near passage of the Amash Conyers Amendment, which would have defunded the NSA's mass collection of data on American citizens, shows that momentum for reform is building. Today, Senators Wyden, Udall, and Blumenthal introduced reforms to the FISA court, including putting in place a special privacy advocate to defend the civil liberties of Americans before the top secret court. Here is a measure that protects core constitutional rights in a way that focuses on making the courts and the process better and fairer. Having two sides represented in court, what's more American? Also, Senator Patrick Leahy introduced the comprehensive FISA Accountability and Privacy Protection Act, which narrows the scope of the Patriot Act, limits gag orders on data collection, and fast forwards the sunset of the FISA Amendments Act. Congress has to carefully consider the powerful surveillance tools that we grant to the government. We have to ensure that there is stringent oversight, accountability, and transparency. I've introduced a bill that addresses not only Section 215 and Section 702, but also national security letters and roving wiretaps and other authorities under the Patriot Act. Also today, Senator Al Franken dropped a bill requiring disclosure of the number of Americans who've had their information collected and reviewed by the NSA. I don't want a situation where the government is transparent only when it's convenient for the government. Meanwhile, in the House, Congressman Rush Holt introduced legislation to repeal the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act. Passing the Patriot Act is one of my great uh, regrets uh, in my time in Congress. Holt says he was deceived by the NSA in 2005 about the extent of its domestic surveillance programs. I wrote the head of the NSA a blistering letter uh, uh, accusing him of, of dis not just deceiving me, an individual, but withholding from Congress uh, the, the necessary information for Congress to be able to do its oversight. Even members of the Intelligence Committees are getting into the game. Congressman Adam Schiff has introduced a number of reforms to the FISA court, including more oversight in appointing judges and declassification of FISA court legal opinions. There's a substantial degree to which we can declassify things that won't impair national security, that will allow a more full debate, that will allow better momentum behind reform, uh, and that's what I'm trying to do with these FISA court bills. Even Senator Dianne Feinstein, one of the biggest supporters of the NSA, has come around to the opinion that reform is inevitable. In an op-ed for the Washington Post this week, Feinstein wrote, Despite these real threats that our intelligence programs seek to thwart, I intend to work with members of the Senate Intelligence and Judiciary Committees to consider changes to the NSA call records program in an effort to increase transparency and improve privacy protections. But recognizing their executive grip on the NSA is slipping, Today, the White House huddled together those lawmakers pushing for reform. And the chief of the NSA, Keith Alexander, is again on Capitol Hill briefing lawmakers on why these programs must stay intact. But here on Capitol Hill, the winds are blowing in the direction of reform. And it's not a matter of if, but when, and what reform will look like, and how it will affect the NSA and the top secret FISA court. Which means, somewhere in Russia, Edward Snowden should be smiling. In Washington, Sam Sachs, RT.